We're now going to discuss the biggest thing in Calculus 1, which is the derivative, and we'll start by discussing kind of the idea behind this. Essentially, the idea of a derivative is if we want to know how quickly something is changing, we can look at the slope, but we need two distinct points. So if I have a graph, and I want to look at the rate of change between these two points, I can just draw a line between them and find the slope at that line. But the idea of a derivative is we want to know the rate of change at a single point rather than through a group of points. So these are called secant lines where it passes through two points on the graph. And we can take these secant lines and the idea is that we want to get these the two x coordinates as close as possible until eventually we have a line that only touches the graph at this one point. And this is our tangent line. And the slope of that tangent line is going to be our derivative. So let's give a slightly more formal definition of this. We're going to call this point x0. And then any other point here, we're going to call x plus h. Essentially, the distance between, sorry, we'll call this x and x plus h. No, we do want x0, sorry. So the idea is the distance between our point x0 and our other point is going to be h. And if we want to try to find the slope of these, we need the y values, and we'll subtract those, divided by subtracting the x values. So x0 plus h minus x0, which is just going to be h. And then we want to make this distance between these two points as small as possible. So we're going to take the limit as h approaches 0. So like I said, the denominator is actually just going to cancel down to h. So here is our difference quotient. The limit is h approaches 0 of f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 over h. And this is essentially what the derivative is. So let's look at a couple of examples of the rate of change and see if we can look into a little more in depth exactly what this is telling us. Let's start with the function x squared and figure out what the rate of change is between 2 and 3. We need to know f of 2, which is 2 squared, and f of 3, which is 3 squared. So then I have f of 3 minus f of 2 over 3 minus 2, which we get to be 5. So the rate of change between 2 and 3 is 5. Now let's look at the rate of change between 2 and 2.5. We still need to know f of 2, which is 4 and f of 2.5, which is 6.25. So now I have f of 2.5 minus f of 2 over 2.5 minus 2. And when we work this out, we get 4.5. So it's not quite as large as the 5 that we got before, but it's still relatively close. Let's do one more. Here we have f of x equal to x squared between 2 and 2.1. We still know that f of 2 is 2, and f of 2.1 is going to be 4.41. So, or, sorry, f of 2 is 4. So now we have 4.41 minus 4 all over 2.1 minus 2, which gives us 4.1. So let's talk about exactly what we're doing here. First, we tried to find the rate of change between 2 and 3. We then did 2 and 2.5, and then 2 and 2.1. And the idea is we want to keep taking smaller and smaller and smaller values and seeing what we're approaching. So this is, like I said before, the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x0 plus h minus f of x0 over h. And we say this is f prime of x0. And this is our notation for the derivative. And 
If this derivative exists, we say a function is differentiable. And it is possible that a function is not differentiable at a point. It's possible that this limit doesn't exist. And in a later video, we will discuss this a little bit more. But for now, we do have this formula for finding the derivative. So we'll next, next we'll look at some examples of how to properly use this formula to actually calculate a derivative, and we'll discuss a little bit more about exactly what the derivative is telling us.